If you're a turnkey investor out there and you're thinking about getting in the game in Cleveland, you are in the right spot. Let's get excited because we are going to break down a Cleveland duplex, but ain't going to be like what you would see from another guru. I'm going to show you the good, the bad, the ugly, everything you need to know. Let's get into it. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS, and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Welcome to the show, folks. This is where I work with you guys, mano a mano, right? And today I'm working with my man, Nick. And his mom, Val, mother-son team of investors, right? So I like to see, right? Families getting together, learning financial literacy, right? Good job out of you, Valerie, starting my dude Nick off young. Young, hungry gun here trying to get some properties, right? And uh, I've been working with you two for a while. And uh, where we're at currently in our investing uh, journey together, right? We just exited the deal uh, of another duplex that I was selling, right? And uh, the it, the reason we backed out of that deal is because we did more due diligence on the property because that's what it's all about, folks. Whether you buy a property from James Wise or some other schmo, you got to do your due diligence, right? So if, if you're watching this show and you take one thing from it, take that you need to do due diligence on real estate if you're going to invest in real estate, right? So we did the due diligence, and we determined that that property was in too poor a condition for what you guys are trying to do. Now, folks, just because a property's in bad condition does not automatically make it a bad real estate investment, right? Sometimes the worst properties, condition-wise, are the best real estate investments, right? It's about getting a property for the right price for the right investor at the right time. For what you two are trying to do, Val and Nick, you guys don't want to deal with a property that's screwed up. And that's good. That's great that we worked through everything and understand that. And now we're going to target properties that are priced a little higher, okay? But in exchange for that higher price, you're going to be able to get a property that is in better condition, right? So what I've got for you today, I believe, is a duplex that's going to check off those boxes. We're going to be starting off. At a price point that's $25,000 higher than that property's original price point. And now with that property, just so you guys are aware, right? We've actually backed that property's price down with the new information, right? The new information that the seller received after you did your due diligence. They're like, ah, we got to sell this thing. We're down to sell it at 70, right? So they're down, down to 70, Right, so the property I'm about to show you is at 115, right? So that's a difference of $45,000. So let's look into why paying more might make sense for you two. Hey, Steve, what are you doing? Oh, nothing. Just saving money on my rental property insurance. Oh my, Steve, take me now. Holton Wise. Real estate investing made easy. Wow, I'm so glad I clicked that link below. Welcome back. Let's pull up the property and let's get down and dirty into the details, folks. 3820-3822, Muriel, Cleveland, 44109. Now, the price point on this is $114,900, and I do like this property. I think it's a nice property. A very solid Cleveland duplex, right? Your true duplex, not one of those like converted type units, right? Just a big solid hoss, right? So I like that, okay? Now you cruise through. You see the interior, not super updated, right? We got tenants in there, and, you know, it's just a little dated, right? So we want to refresh this when these folks move out. But, folks, you're pretty much going to refresh them anytime people move out. We're definitely going to be repainting the walls. Sometimes I like to go white on the trim. Sometimes we leave it. Like the, the bathroom, I'm sure we'll swap out this vanity, right? You're definitely going to want to swap that out. And uh, the hot water tank, right? Eh, this one, just so you know, it's probably around 10 years old. 
these furnaces, this one's newer. This one is like old, old. This one's probably like original, I had to guess. This is probably within the last 10 years. Both of these, if you had to replace them, it's going to cost you about 3 Gs. You do that every 30 years. But as you can see when the original ones, sometimes you get like way more, right? So like sometimes you get a furnace that lasts 40 years, 50 years, 60 years, right? But it doesn't happen all the time. So I like to average it out for you guys, right? Tell you guys 30 years, right? But as you can see from that one, it's way freaking older than 30 years. Doesn't always work that way. This hot water tank appears to be pretty much brand new i'd have to say uh in those last roughly 15 years upgraded electric right so the bones of this are pretty nice pretty solid right pretty solid looking but like the kitchen you can see is definitely dated like the pictures obviously are not that great but like look at this floor right now the rest of the unit as you can tell had uh nice hardwoods right so refreshing that when these tenants eventually move that's easy you're just painting maybe we're doing trim maybe we're not the kitchen gonna need to do a little more right there's not gonna be those nice hardwoods that you see throughout the rest of the unit under the kitchen but we'll do a new modern vinyl allure flooring on this kitchen that we would match in the bathroom but that is not something you necessarily need to worry about right now because you do have two paying tenants in there and they are paying dramatically lower right they're paying 550 and 550 and that in my opinion is actually good for us okay Here's where we're at. Solid deal. Cleveland's West Side. Like this neighborhood. Blue collar, little working class neighborhood. We got friggin' hundreds of these solid investments, right? They all, uh, like these true traditional Cleveland duplexes, they got the same layout, right? That kitchen, it's in the back. In the middle, it's a dining room. Up front, you got the living room. On the other side, it's two bedrooms with a bath in the middle. They even all have that same little, uh, like, built-in shelving system in the dining room that you've seen here like i literally have freaking hot man these pictures are so zoomed in <laughs> i don't know what the agent was doing but like this extends this this thing like extends to the other side of the room and it like matches it but like uh, that's how like uh <clears throat> how like rep i don't even know what the term is like that's just like the same type of builder just went in and did like the same friggin plan like all across the city right that's just how similar they all are so like even though i haven't physically stepped foot in this property like i feel like i really know the property and they perform very very well right so nice solid property but the tenants are paying way less that in my opinion is good right because the price point here hundred fourteen thousand nine hundred. i think that would probably be a fine price if they were getting market rent and market rent 750 a unit, okay? That's 15 hundo a month, 18 G's a year. After you factor in your fixed and variable expenses, right? Things like your tenant turnover, things like your capital expenditures, improving the units between tenant turnover, like I talked about doing the new vinyl flooring and stuff, right? You factor that in every year, okay? Like you're keeping these $900 line items you see for repairs, maintenance, vacancy, and non-payment capex. You keep that. That's money that goes in your pocket. But I'm having you pretend that you're not receiving it as profit right now because... I know eventually when you do those turns I was talking about, you're going to drop a few grand, right? So I don't want you to be masked by this money and thinking your true return is going to be higher because it's really not, right? Because eventually you will pay the piper and spend that money on those things, right? Try to be as upfront as I can when I'm uh, teaching you guys how to do all this jazz, right? So with that said, it clears about eight grand a year in pure profit. Yes, why those tenants are in there, you're making an additional, what is that, like uh, 18, 2100, right? On top of that, right? So that's more like 10 grand, but don't factor that in because eventually we're going to come knocking for that money when it's time to remove those tenants or when they move out on their own and we, you know, upgrade the units, right? So that eight G's. With the fact that those tenants are not yet at 750 I think that allows us a little negotiating power. And we're going to try to get aggressive on these folks and try to pick this up for you at 100 Doing so, we only got to put down 25 Bank kicks in 75 That'd be about a 17% cash on cash return if we got them existing tenants up to market rate, right? Now, that's the thing. They're at 550 market rate 750 We're going to utilize that, right? To beat up the seller a little bit, try to get the property for cheaper than we probably should. Try to get it for a hundred, right? If you had to pay more than a hundred, I don't think it'd be a bad deal. I think you should probably do it. It's a very nice property. But that said, it gives us a good shot to try to get it for a hundred. And then what we want to do with them tenants, we just go up slowly. You don't want to immediately be like, yo, your rent's seven fifty now, or you got to get out. You don't want to do that legally. Yeah, you can do that. They're month to month. You give them a thirty day notice. You could up it to whatever the hell you want. But you don't really want to do that. Look, I'm not like a bleeding heart, obviously. If you've watched the show, I think you would know I'm not a bleeding heart. Uh, if you don't yet know that I'm not a bleeding heart, you got to watch more of the show. Now, 
with that said, my desire to keep them in the unit and let them get cheaper than market rent is not because of their feelings and my feelings, right? It's because of your bottom line. If you do that, you create an above average chance that you're going to get another turnover. I like to call that an artificial turnover, right? You're going to deal with turnovers in the business. I line itemed it in your chart, right? You're going to get that. Don't make more of that than is absolutely necessary, right? Those turnovers kill us, right? I told you, 2100 a year for repairs, maintenance, vacancy, and non-payment capital expenditures, right? I gave you an NOI of 8037 on average, right? But true money coming in your door is another 2100 above that eight grand. Well, guess what? If you are creating more turnovers than necessary, right? Your ROI is going down. Your true money, your eight grand is going down. If you're getting less turnovers than average, your freaking ROI is flying through the roof, right? So instead of getting aggressive, trying to get that extra $200 a month out of one of those tenants, go lower so you can keep them in there and you don't got to drop a few grand updating the unit, right? Now, when we get the kitchen and bath fixtures into the 21st century looking super new and fresh. Do you got to redo those again over the next like two or three or four or five or six or seven turns? No, but you're probably going to be repainting the unit every time. That's just the nature of the game, right? At least every other time, dude, they fucking put holes in the walls every now and again. Couches get shoved against the walls. Nick scratches this, that. I mean, it's just part of the business, right? There's deep cleans. You're missing rent. You're paying leasing fees. It costs money to turn people in and out, right? What is cheaper is keeping the same body in the unit, right? Because when they're in the unit, your repairs go almost to zero, okay? Your CapEx, outside of the big ticket stuff, like the, the building structural integrity issues, right? Like your mechanicals and things of that nature, right? Your interiors, though, like upgrading them, you don't ever do a kitchen upgrade for an existing tenant. That's just not how it works, right? If Joe Schmo tenant moves on a property and the kitchen looks one way and he lives there for 20 years... Same kitchen, dog. You don't get a new kitchen in the middle. That's not how this game works, right? You got to move to get a new kitchen. That's just how the rental game works, all right? So that's what you want to do. So I would recommend instead of going from 550 to 750, we take them to like 6. And then after that, we do another year lease, take them to 650. And then slowly work them, right? Maybe even go from, you know, 75 up, 550 to 6 and a quarter. Maybe 550 to 650. Somewhere in there, right? I just don't think you want to go right to market rent. Give them an incentive not to move because if they move, it will cost you money. And I want to see you get a higher ROI, whether that be by bringing in more gross income or reducing gross expenses. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.